Hello and welcome to my first devlog for Desmond the Scary Lunchbox. Desmond the Scary Lunchbox is an arcade style game in which you play as Desmond, in which you try to scare food to win. Uh, th this is like the really early stage of me building a lot of the uh, introductory systems that I need to actually make the game function. But believe it or not, I spent a lot of time, which I'm going to get to how much time I've spent all together on this. This is kind of just a quick debug level, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the process as I've gone. So thanks for sticking around and please stay tuned. If you actually want to play my prototype, you can find it on my itch.io page if you are uh, interested. It's pretty bare bones, but it's kind of like my very first uh, minimum viable product, and obviously I feel like the one flaw of it is having better AI, which is definitely something I'm working on, and it's been a bit of a challenge, but I'll definitely talk about that more in another devlog the more I go. I compiled it for both Mac and Windows, um, and it should work on both. I tested it on both. The only thing, you may get warnings because I didn't code sign them. Maybe in the future, I may do that if I actually... Well, I mean, I definitely plan to release it, but when I do, I'll probably I'll probably have to do that. Um, if that helps, so please play it if you get a chance, and any feedback would be appreciated because I'm always looking to uh, get feedback as I go. When I've been working on Desmond, the Scary Lunchbox, I pretty much had to build a lot of systems from scratch. And to be honest, I feel like it's not really for the faint of heart of what I've done. Um, I used a Godot engine for a lot of, well, pre pretty much everything. I've been programming it in GD script, and I'll always have to say that if you're interested in learning to start for the first time, definitely check out the docs. I think it's probably a good introductory for how to do it, but I'm also going to say you may want to look into using, like, um, ChatGPT or Gemini for learning. I would never recommend copying and pasting code from there, but I feel like it could sometimes be a good tool for learning how to do it. But I will give you one word of warning that if you're using any of those tools, sometimes they provide information about the older docs. So like, you may not always be getting information from 4.2. So it's kind of like you have to learn from both sides of the information to be able to put it together. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure no one wants to see all of the code and all of the time I've spent uh, working on all of this type, all these different systems, but I will say that like, I probably have done it in a more complex way than many other people would have done, but I use things like component-based architecture and uh, various design patterns to pretty much make the game a lot more easy to update, easy to maintain, documented. It's a lot of those things that people who are starting out may not feel the pain until you go much further in and you kind of end up uh, feeling it. Um, but I may make videos going into that if people are interested in it, but I will say there are a lot of other YouTubers who have made really good uh, informational videos on how to use component-based architecture and design patterns. But I will say at the end of the day, a lot of it is kind of a judgment call. Um, I do have a little bit of experience, and I'm going to talk about that right now. I want to talk about some challenges that I've gone through when I was making my game. I would say the first time, I wasn't using component-based architecture and design patterns. And I know I said that before, but the reason why I find that so important is because when you don't do that, it makes everything else so unmaintainable. And if you want to change anything, you have to change a bunch of other things. So by doing component-based architecture, I was able to break up not only uh, certain reusable components, but whole design patterns themselves, making them reusable so I don't have to repeat code again and again and again. When I first started learning GD Script, it was it was a lot because a lot, some of the tutorials I f uh, followed were good, but they ran into the big spaghetti code problem. And I'm grateful that those people uh, made tutorials, put them online in uh, text form and video form. But the big downside to, to it was being able to maintain it and add on to it in, on the future. <laughs> Sorry if I stuttered. Um, so the thing about that is you could do that with everything. You can do that with anything that something else may use. You could use it with logic. You could use it with graphic or even tying both together. Um, being able to use singletons when you need to. Uh, that's a whole topic that you kind of have to delve into itself. 
it was a real big challenge just getting it to work in every scene. But another thing you have to think about is like um, how you want to do it. Do you want to have a single manager or do you want to have individual things be in charge? So even at the end of the day, there's always a bit of a call to it. And let alone styling buttons and various other things. I'll tell you, I've spent days just trying to, uh, well, how about if I show you? <laughs> I might as well. Sorry I didn't have this open before. Um, sometimes it takes a bit of time. My computer's good, but sometimes it can be a bit of a toaster. Um, so, this. Like, it took me so long to style these, uh, I, I forget what the volume sliders. So I had a bunch of volume sliders, and there's, like, the master bus, the music bus, and the sounds bus. I had to, like, create the separate buses, and even just styling these, it took me so much time. Sometimes even when you follow the documentation, it's still a challenge to get things to behave exactly how you want to. And I have to say, I really do love Godot, and I think with any uh, type of game engine, but I think Godot is especially good because of everything. I would say the entire experience is good, even though you have to end up learning a lot, but I think it's all worthwhile because you really do get a good understanding of everything, in my opinion. But yeah, you, you may end up spending a couple days just trying to figure out how to style something like this, because there's just so many rabbit holes that you could end up uh, going down. Even even creating a menu system that you like, it's um, <laughs> it's a lot, but I do enjoy it. If I had to talk about the largest challenge I had when doing all of this, I would say it's asset creation because there's always this rabbit hole of how far you want to take it. Because I had to spend a lot of time deciding what size sprites I want to use. Um, and you may see even from my game, uh, the tile mapping, which is a whole nother thing in itself. Um, I also had to learn a lot of uh, a sprite and all the challenges that go with that. I also have many times experimented with many different sprite sheets, um, recreating sprite sheets, iterating. I have a couple other videos that I'll leave in the comments below of uh, how I worked on that in Asprite. I'll probably just link to the playlist in case anyone wants to get started or kind of learn about it, but there are probably other better, better videos on learning how to do, use a sprite. Um, but yeah, there's just so many aspects, and sometimes when you do this, well, that may be your day. You may be spending a good chunk of your day just trying to create the perfect asset. All to, all to learn that maybe you spent too much time trying to create it and you could have made something more simple. And I will say that that is kind of like something you kind of just go, you end up making a lot of assets that will never see the light of day. Um, <laughs> besides in this video that I'm showing you now. Um, if I had to give one other little, I guess you could say nugget of advice, I would say it does help to associate your code files with um, icons in one way or another. And the reason why um, I think it's good to have that is because it can help you see in the editor to the left side just a little visual representative of that. Um, the icons I used from this were from a pack. I'm definitely going to include that in the comments. I will say that um, it was like some RPG. It was a... Uh, I feel bad, but I'll definitely credit the creator of it in the comments, um, well, in the description below. But I will say that sometimes a pack may not have the image you want, but you could always make the 16 by 16 image that you want to and just include the icon above. Um, I do highly recommend it because I feel like if you don't do that, everything becomes a bit hard to see or like everything ends up being like a circle. And I feel like when you do that, when you see all of the information in the scene, it just becomes a mess and you end up having to hunt for things longer than you otherwise would. So I hope that little piece of advice helps you for all of you Godot developers out there. Ever since I started working on Desmond the Scary Lunchbox, I've been categorizing and adding everything to a work log. Um, for all of you people who may be more on the technical side, of course I do use uh, Git along with the remote repository to store my code. But when I do work, I've been trying to add some type of hour amount to it or some type of minute amount. I don't always have full time to work on this game. I mean, pretty much I don't. Um, and I only have like the very late hours of the day to work on this. Some days I am able to supplement a lot of my uh, exhaustion with coffee and other caffeine products to help. 
Um, and so far, it is, it's actually July 8th right now, um, 8 p.m., but I did a calculation of how much time I've spent so far, and this is minutes, this is hours, this is days. I did some rounding, so I pretty much have spent 13 straight days, 24 hours in a day. Of course, not actually 13 straight days. Um, no one would be productive in that time for something like this, but I will say that, like, I, I think it is helpful for me to catalog all of this. Um, if I had to share another downside, it's that it's it's really hard to have time to do it all. Um, I feel like with sound effects and music, it's something that I really have been uh, well not slacking on. I've been trying to get better at it because I want to have a good understanding of it. And the funny thing is, I can actually credit um, it's RPG Lab icons. Of course, I'm gonna add their itch in the video description below. But I'm glad I finally saw them. Uh, <laughs> the reference to them in this video. So yeah, RPG Lab icons were those icons in the Godot editor for the scene. It's like a bunch of 16 by 16 icons that you can use to uh, put a graphic for a node. It helps make the hierarchy better. But yeah, 13 days. Um, that's not too bad. To be honest, I feel like a lot of things here probably took me a little bit more time because, um, you know, I first started learning Godot um, pretty much this year, a little bit in December last year, but for the most part, this year, and I've been trying to learn it whenever I can. I'm always trying to review uh, the GD script syntax. Obviously, there's a lot more that I can know, but I don't, I'm not going to go through all of this because a lot of this can probably be painful, and I do want to say that like sometimes I will include um, more information here than I would include in, uh, for those of you who use Git, uh, more like way more than I would ever put in a git commit message. Um, so yeah, <laughs> this this could just be totally like, oh man, I could spend hours talking, well not, not hours, but probably maybe like a half hour talking about this if you want me to. Um, if you are interested in me making a video about this, please let me know in the comments and I'll probably just make a video talking about all the pains I've gone through. Um, but I do want to say a lot of these pains are mine. Um, Godot is a great engine, Aspirate is great software, all the software I use is really great. Of course you could always look below here and you could see all the <laughs> different software that I use. Funny thing, I never introduced who I am. Well, I'm Lars, if you're on here, you're on my, probably on my YouTube channel, and if you're interested in me, please subscribe. Uh, I probably make a lot of other content that's a little bit more informational. Um, I also created a few other apps. Um, some of them are free, some of them are not. Um, but I will say a lot of them are, and I always make applications and other content to help artists, but I am going to try to make devlogs when I can. I will encourage you to please, please, please try out my prototype if you're interested in it, or you can even just give me feedback if you uh, play the video. I have an unlisted video if you're interested in looking at that as well. Um, as I go, I definitely plan to upload more, I'm not sure what you would call them, probably not prototypes, but probably, probably alpha isn't the right version either to call it, just because I'm just so in these beginning phases, but I do have some ideas for enemies. Um, I've been drawing them, and maybe I will share them at some point in time, but for the most part, yeah, I've really been working on this. Um, if you do subscribe to my channel, please do forgive me, because I have a lot of, uh, informational drawing videos I push out, so... Not every video I push out is going to be a devlog or devlog related, but when I do release those types of videos, I'll probably like try to push it out in a special way. So yeah, um, I have a bit of a background with programming, and the one thing I always try to do um, is try to make it a good experience. I want it to be fun. So those have been my uh, my big things. I've throughout my life I've dealt with really bad software and code bases and stuff that just has driven me to the point that I would rather do it myself in some way. But yeah, um, if you are interested in playing my game, please play my prototype. If you like my channel, please subscribe. If you like the video, please like it. If you don't like it, thumbs down it. Um, if you have any questions, please ask in the comments. Um, there's only so much information I could fit in a video without it dragging on forever and getting bored. Um, if you are interested in like just seeing the other stuff I've made, I have it on my Gumroad. 
Um, you know, I feel like itch.io is better for games compared to applications, so that's why I have a Gumroad and an itch. Um, I also have a website for those who are interested, but I have to say, for the most part, you're probably not. So yeah, I'll include links in the description uh, for all this information, so thanks for sticking around and listening to me rant about my stuff. Um, yeah, if you have any questions about the process, please ask in the comments below. Bye.